Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I'm back again tonight with another great mech review. Uh, so this one is courtesy of our subscriber Talzine. Uh, P.S. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, but made a recommendation about doing a review on all of the mechs in a game of Armored Combat. Uh, and so we've done a couple of them already, the Griffin, the Wolverine, uh, the Thunderbolt as well. Um, so I decided since we're on a kick with light mechs, I'd take a look at one of my favorites, the Commando Com 2D. Uh, love this little guy. It's, it's absolute garbage uh, because it's so paper thin and it's just a walking bomb with all that ammo. But if you can get this thing in range, man, it can lay a whooping for the battle value. So I uh, decided to run this one through the Battleytics engine, see what came out the other end. Um, was... Not terribly surprised, uh, especially at the survivability. Don't want to give any spoilers, so stay tuned. We'll check out all of those charts and graphs that are coming your way right now. Alright guys, here we are, one of my favorites, the Commando. Uh, I've got one of these in my 5th Atrium Knights. Uh, and also uh, in the Royalston Grenadiers, so I'm sure you've seen both of those on the channel. Uh, I just love this little guy. Um, just has so much potential, uh, and, and yet uh, so fragile. So, 25-ton uh, light mech, inner sphere design, battle value 541. Uh, this mech is a, uh, it's an old one. Uh, 2486 was when it was built. That's during the Age of War, uh, and persisted... Um, forever. Uh, it never goes extinct. It's, it's found all the way into the early Republic. Um, so this design, very, uh, very prolific in that regard, just kind of everywhere. Um, in terms of the stats, so movement profile of 6.9. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not the fastest light mech you'll see, um, but it has enough speed to claim that plus three mod, which is key. Um, only 10 heat sinks equipped on the chassis, um, but it does have some really big guns. It's got an SRM-6, an SRM-4, and a medium laser, um, so all things in uh, it could actually hit for 25 points of damage with a full alpha strike if you get really lucky. Um, so that's you know pilot check inducing, uh, you know PSR check um, inducing type damage, which is pretty great coming out of such a cheap little guy um, here. So uh, in terms of armor, um, I, I think this thing's pretty pretty well off. 71.9% um, coverage four tons of armor for an armor factor of 64. Um, and if you look at the distribution in the center there, it looks pretty good. Um, has all of its actuators, upper, lower, hand. Um, and so, you know, this mech, again, equipped for both decent short-range combat, uh, but also can, can get down and brawl if it needs to as well. So on the offensive side, um, in, terms of, in terms of damage output, so this mech um, again, we talked about 10 heat sinks. It's got a lot of big guns. It can actually generate heat. So when, um, when you're at uh, point blank range and, you know, I guess within nine inches, right? And you have all of your weapons in play uh, and then you're walking, you're gonna build up one point of turn or one point of heat per turn. When you alpha strike, if you're running, you build up two points of heat per turn uh, when you alpha strike. So what we see here is our red line ACD kind of starts to creep up. Um, above the baseline because the baseline is set at, you know, four points of heat, you know, um, the red line is set at 29. So um, that's how we optimize this thing, basically. So the red line damage, the optimized damage, they're going to look the same. Um, and basically that clocks in at 63.1 points of damage. Now, considering that damage is all done uh, in a very condensed part of our, of our benchmark, basically from turn six to turn 12, um, so there, um, there, there's a good chunk, um, actually, I'm sorry, yeah, turn 7 to turn 12, so there's 6 turns where it's actually not doing any damage. That's pretty good. I mean, that does 63 points of damage in 6 turns. That's, a, that's substantial. Um, for reference, we just looked at the Locust um, a little while ago, um, and that had a similar optimized number, um, but again, with those LRM5s, that was able to deal damage basically immediately. So, um, Moral of the story is that the Commando is a pretty potent mech. It can be pretty potent. So how did it do on the lethality? Well, I was a little let down and, and frankly a little surprised here. Um, 
it it did not kill the javelin as much as I expected. Um, 98.6, I'm sorry, 98.6%, yeah, that's right, of the time um, the javelin survived. It was only destroyed 1.2% of the time by the COM2D. Um, COM2D is a 2.39 damage per hit. And now that's courtesy of all of those SRMs firing, you know, 10 SRMs um, and each of those missiles doing two points of damage and then just the one medium laser. So it's, it's damage per hit's pretty low. Um, but what I was surprised about was the critical hits, 1.47. Um, when, I'm, when I've got the Commando involved in a game, it's generally a crit generating machine, but then I realized that that really is when it's paired with bigger mechs. Like I like to pair it with things like a, like a Centurion that has an AC-10 or mechs with a PPC, something with high caliber um, that can peel off armor very quickly, and then you spray it with the, Centur or with the Commando, rather. Um, and you know you're you're gonna you're lucky you know you're gonna get lucky and hit that exposed location. So anyway, um, one on one though this this just it I think what happened is when I dug into the numbers it was just spraying damage all over the javelin um, and it, it just really didn't expose any internal locations to generate those crits. So um, on its own not a great mech paired up with something bigger and meaner I think you're gonna see better um, better numbers out of this mech in terms of critical hits and things like that. So. Um, time to kill against the Javelin wasn't bad, uh, 20.8. Now, um, to compare this to some of the other mechs we looked at, um, we, we've been on like a rash of light mechs. They've all had pretty low lethality indices. Um, however, the Commando has the lowest time to kill. Um, I, I think the Assassin was like at 35 or something like that. The Locust might have been at 20, 28 or 25, and this guy's at 20. Um, why is that? Well, it has to do with the curve, right? So the Commando, given a little bit more time, would have been able to punch through this Javelin. Because remember, it's only engaging six out of the 12 turns in the benchmark. So it only has six turns to really, you know, get through um, that external armor to peel that armor off. And again, that sort of shotgun factor of those 10 SRMs coming out of this thing, um, all attribute to that. But you give it a little bit more time in close or give it a buddy um, that has some bigger guns, and you'll definitely see some results with this mech. So on the defensive side, um, the Commando, how did it do? Well, um, not great. It's, it's almost as bad as, as the Locust, um, which was surprising, uh, uh, frankly, uh, because this thing has four tons of, of armor, um, and is a, you know for a 25-ton mech, that's a lot. Um, the Locust, again, you know had a ton of armor, um, and, and only did marginally uh, worse than this thing did. Um, so this thing was killed 96.2% of the time. Um, you know, out of those deaths, I would say about one third of them are attributed to ammunition explosions. The other two third um, attributed to just normal, you know, coring out or head kills or things like that. Um, on the motive side, you know, the 6.9 basically gets you a plus three target mod, which I think contributes to this thing's survivability, what little it does have. But again, you know, a plus three versus a plus four, as we saw with the Assassin, it's like it's like night and day, um, you know, and, and for, for comparison, I think the Assassin actually has four and a half tons of armor, um, but can claim that plus four modifier, and the Assassin, uh, the survival was, was substantially higher, I think, in the 63 percentile range, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so kind of interesting to do um, this string of mechs because they all have sort of things that overlap, and, and we can kind of see how... Um, the numbers really pan out and, and how something like an additional point of speed, um, you know, really makes uh, a world of difference. Um, so when we look at the, the ammo crit chance by location, um, so one of the things that jumped out at me, left and right torsos, both at 33% uh, chance to hit the ammo. So once you get through that external armor, and I think there's only maybe six or eight points on those side torsos, you got a one in three chance of hitting an ammo bin. There's not a whole lot padding those torsos out. Um, so <clears throat> if you do get through, you're, you're very likely to, um, to pop this mech. So armor distribution looks pretty good overall. Maybe a little light on the CT, but at the end of the day, you know, that's not, uh, that's not too detrimental. I would probably take a little bit of armor off the rear torso. I mean, I, there's not much there to begin with. I think three pips on the side torsos, four on the center, but 
Um, you know, you, if, if you wanted, you could peel a little bit off of there and put it in the center, but um, there's really just not a lot to do with mechs of this size. So, um, and of course, those percentages can get skewed pretty quickly when you're only talking about 10 points of armor versus, you know, 28 or something like that. So, um, that's armor on, on the Centurion. When you look at the cumulative survivability, um, very similar story to, you know, um, like the Locust and mechs like that, except for this mech's a little bit tougher than that. And you can see once it gets into, you know, about seven or six inches, that's really where the, the kill curve kind of inflects and jumps up pretty high. Um, so once that awesome, um, which is our test mule in these defensive benchmarks, gets into short range, this mech just gets crumpled. Um, so, you know, if you're going to play this mech, um, and, and this is how I try to play this mech, Keep it in cover, you know, keep it behind bigger mechs, distract your target, you know, put put juicier targets out front. Um, if, if you're and if you're playing against a commando, just try to pop it. Don't try to shoot it at long range because it's going to be moving fast. You're going to have those high mods. But as soon as that thing gets into a reasonable target number or if, you know, if it slows down for whatever reason, just pop the thing because they die very easily. So basically, we can see the mech survives. And then as soon as it gets within range, right, it starts it starts tanking. Now, what's difficult about mechs that only have short-range weapons is that they're going to show very poorly in this benchmark, um, especially when they have very weak survivability because all of their damage is done at close range. And, you know, 50% of the time, this thing's dead before it even gets in range as far as the benchmark is concerned. Um, so, again, super critical that this mech is kept alive for as long as possible so it can bring its payload to bear. You know, if you're uh, not careful with this mech and you run it out in the open and an archer gets a beat on it, you know, you can kiss this thing goodbye. You might as well not even bring it to the table. Um, again, survival rate in our benchmark was 3.8%, so very low, very fragile. Um, our optimized damage was 63.1. Our effective ACD was 11.3, so you're losing, you know, five, five six of your damage basically, um, you know, just from uh, that, uh, that, that survivability being factored in there. Um, so when we look at the efficiency score of this mech, this is, this is the lowest we've rated to date, uh, 1.49. So very, very much not a good bang for buck. Um, and, and it, you know, I love the mech and I will continue to play it. Um, so don't take this as a, you know, as a rule of, uh, you know, hard, hard and fast rule of what you should and should not play. Um, but I think it informs you that if you play this mech recklessly, um, again, you might as well just give your opponent, uh, you know, 541 free points because you're just not going to get any return on investment. But if you can keep this mech safe and you can get it into range, you can look at the optimized ACD um, on, that, on that area chart in the right. I mean, this thing can really lay down some pain, um, you know, when it gets in close. I mean, it, you know, it can, it can definitely uh, dish out some damage, but... Um, if you're not if you're not cautious with it, you know it's just going to end up getting roasted. Um, I think this mech can also be very strong, and we'll talk about this in the rolls in in just light and medium type matches. Um, you know, in that sort of 20 to 40 ton, 20 to 45 ton range, this mech it's it's just a different kind of animal. Um, but against bigger, uh, you know, mediums like the Wolverines, and of course, heavy isn't even assaults. I mean, it, it's it's you have to be really careful with this mech. Um, so let's talk about gunnery score sensitivity. Not much to say here. There is very little. Um, 0.281. Um, so increasing the gunnery isn't really going to do much for you. Um, and so what that tells me is run this thing with your rookie pilots, um, you know, with your four fives, or, you know, if you want to put a three, three gunnery in there, that's fine too. But in order for this mech to really be effective, you're going to need to be a point blank any, anyway, um, you know, and so... You might as well just get them in there, um, and uh, and and run it uh, run it with a lower gunnery. You'll you'll get a better return, I think, overall. Um, of course, again, you know, we talked about this with the locust. The battle value is so low. You know, moving it up to a gunnery three probably isn't a bad idea. You'll get a little bit more of efficiency uh, out of it. But uh, again, you know, you're going to be basically at short range anyway with this guy. You know, get him up there, get him personal. Um, that's kind of how I would play it. So, rolls. Let's look at let's look at what we got here. So, optimized ACD sixty three point one. Again, this is crammed into six times, so that's pretty good. If you were to extrapolate that, and you know, um, over twelve turns, you're you know you're looking at, at quite a bit of, of damage. But as far as the benchmark is concerned, we we clocked in at sixty three point one. 
Um, it was 2.39 damage per hit. That's on the low side, and again, that's attributed to that swarm of SRMs that this thing brings to the table. Um, very low survival rate at 3.8. Uh, movement was 6, 9 with no jump capability, so respectably fast, but not blazing fast. Can't get that 4 mod, which I think is critical um, when you're talking about mechs of this size and, and this armor capability. Um, it was able to build up a little bit of heat, so you know you got to be careful if you're running an alpha striking. Um, again, taking a heat penalty on uh, from, uh, I'm sorry, a, a movement penalty on from heat could be just devastating for this mech, um, so you got to be a little bit careful there. Um, the efficiency was 1.49, so very low there, um, and the sensitivity 0.281. Um, so scoring-wise, offensively, 2 out of 5. Defensively, 0.5 out of 5, so that was on par really with that locust we looked at. Mobility, 3.5 out of 5, so not bad, above average. Control, 4.5 out of 5, so still very easy to manage the heat on this mech, but you just can't run around at full speed and alpha strike all day. Um, and the efficiency of this mech was a 1 out of 5, so below average there. Um, when we look at the threat assessment for this mech, um, it just is a step function, basically. The closer you get, the better it is. Um, and that really ties into what we were talking about in the gunnery score sensitivity. Just keep this thing safe, and at the opportune moment, just blast it in as close as you can uh, and unload. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, if you can even get two or three good salvos in, I think you'll get your return on investment for this mech. Um, but if you're careless and you have the thing out in the open and you think it's a tank because it has four tons of armor, I think uh, I think the dice gods will not favor you <laughs> and you'll be you'll be sitting on top of a, of a walking bomb with this mech. Um, so threat envelope wise, not much to say. It does have two arm mounted weapons, so it has a pretty good arc of fire. Um, but it's fast enough that you probably shouldn't find yourself outmaneuvered too much. Although mechs uh, that are lighter, uh, faster with jump jets, things like that. Um, or if you're playing with battle armor, things like that, you know, those arms may come into play. Um, and don't forget about those hand actuators, too. Um, so combat roles, really only two roles that I would play this mech in. The first one um, is a brawler. So this is, you know, this mech is good in a city fight, even against bigger mechs. You know, you've got a big, slow assault lance. You need to fill out the points. Throw a commando in. Use the buildings for cover. Don't march them down the main street, you know, so that the, you know, enemy LRMs can lock them and toast them. You know, use cover, use the alleyways, get them in close. It's a perfect environment. Um, even any other type of map that has heavy cover um, and you can feel confident about getting this guy in, um, do it. You know, under level two water, whatever it might be, keep them out of sight, get them in close range. This is where this mech shines. Um, even in uh, situations where he's facing down other light mechs, where you're not going to see, you know, AC-10s, you're not going to see a whole bunch of large lasers and PPCs or LRM-20s. You know, this guy can take a hit here or there, just can't take a whole lot. Um, and if you present bigger, juicier uh, targets, um, you know, frontline type mechs to take the heat and you can get this guy in again, you know, return on investment. So that's my primary way of playing the commando. And that's, I think, what the numbers support here as well. Um, the other thing you can do is run him as a picket mech. Um, so, you know, this is like sort of Wolverine style where you're going to want to get him in um, fast and you're just going to want to annoy the living crap out of a bigger mech. Um, use your speed to stay in, you know, favorable arcs of fire, um, you know, just unload weapons as quickly as you can. This mech does not have the survivability that something like a Wolverine has. Um, so, you know, play this role with care, um, but using this as a distraction even if you're playing like an Alpha Strike type game um, or, or even just, you know, God bless you, a Battletech game with, you know, 8 on 8 or, um, you know, something something big and 8 on 5 like, you know, two lances against a star and you have some mechs to spare um, and you don't mind using this guy as a sacrificial pawn, um, playing this in a picket roll is good because it's fast enough to get in and it's got the firepower where people have to deal with it because if you leave it unchecked, you know, it's going to, as, as we saw in the benchmarks, I mean, it has the capability of turning on um, the jets there and, and dishing out some damage. So that's that. All right. So commando all wrapped up. So this is, uh, I think this is the third light mech now that we've done in a row. Uh, we might take a look at some other sizes next, but, uh, kind of interesting to, to look at these very different mechs side by side. Right. Um, and, and so I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this sort of mini series. It's now a mini series, by the way, um, of, uh, of mech reviews. Uh, always interested in your comments, especially, you know, how you play this mech. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, if you haven't subscribed, 
please do so. Um, you know, uh, love love to see those subscriber counts going up, um, and appreciate uh, for all of you guys that that have been uh, subscribers and, and actively commenting. Uh, you know, love it. Uh, I love I love reading all the comments and and all the support that we get. So appreciate all that stuff. Um, so stay tuned. A lot more coming your way from Death from Above Wargaming. Have a good night, guys.